Hi, folks. Here we are today. It's a new episode of the Bellied Up Podcast. Yep. We're here in Fargo at Duffy's Tavern. I Duffy's believe. Tavern is a nice <clears throat> bar. If you guys are in Fargo, you want to come down here, you want to get a good look at some wood on the walls. You, come I believe to- it's the, the uh, first original Irish bar here in Fargo is what I heard. You know, Miles, I think I heard that, too. I and do. It's great vibes in here, though. What on the walls? A little U-shaped bar in the middle. Yeah. Can't ask for much more. No, they don't make them like this much anymore, Miles. No, they don't. Tell you that. Uh, bathroom's nice and small. Yeah. Three stalls. I had they to, squeezed in there, though. Yeah, Good I had for to, to get to the urinal, I had to turn sideways to get to it, which is always what you're looking for at a small town bar. That is exactly it. That is exactly it. They upgraded from the trough here to the three stall deal. Is that and, what he said? No, I'm just assuming that. I at imagine one point at some point trough. they did have a trough. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Or well, a bird bath. You ever see that? Just a bird bath in the bathroom. I next haven't. To the urinal? But I don't know if that if I want to or not. But oh, you do. Is that, that is just a, everyone then circles around it? Yeah, it's a sight to behold. Yeah. And then I, someone eyes got to stay up though. I stay <laughs> up. Well, not here's the thing though. You, you don't want to pee on the fellow across from you, so yeah. your eyes have to go down initially to no get that. No longer initial. than a half second down. Okay. Anything longer is uh, gets a little weird. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, and birds don't typically like to bathe in those no. baths after that. Yeah. Well, it, guys, the kinky welcome. ones do. <laughs> I was just going to leave that. Uh, welcome back, guys, uh, to the Bellied Up Podcast. The Golden Finches like to <laughs> be. <laughs> Charlie, what would your mother think of this conversation? Uh, I don't know, Miles. Do one of these right off the uh, back yeah. of the head. My mom doesn't listen to this podcast. She's too busy working for you? Yeah, she does a great job. By the way, Miles, guess what? Hmm. I got a musical album out today. What? Yeah, I'm straight up plugging right away. I'm coming out plugging, dude. What is it? It's called uh, Dive Bar Dinner. It's it's a new musical album that I came out with. It's out today. You can purchase it on the internet. Give me a sample right here, right now. Um, My voice is a little rough right now, so I'm going to pass on that. Oh, that we we'll just auto tune you. No, I'm not Jared, gonna you can do that. It. I'm not gonna do that. Not on this podcast because I know you guys are gonna do some funny things in the edits here. You guys, come on, let's hear it. No, no. What's your favorite song on the album? Let's My favorite song on the album. There is a song called "Keep Her Moving." Let's hear it. <clears throat> no, I'm not going to do it. Okay. I'm not going to do it. You heard, a, that was as much tease as you're uh, going to get. You got to go stream it on Spotify. That's it. Because I'm not in the right voice, you know. And the acoustics in here are not ideal. No, I'm just I'm, I'm a having sore a throat cold. for a I month. Do. Yeah. I haven't had a sore throat for a month. I just got it, actually. Since I saw you yesterday, it, it came up. So I woke up <laughs> scratching, uh, scratching my throat. Did I stress you out that much? I mean, you were on a rip and a roar last night. I'll tell you that much. So, Charlie, tomorrow is Thanksgiving. And, Miles, I am thankful for you. I'm thankful that. You can just say for you, Charlie. I'm thankful for you as well, Charlie. Um, What's your favorite dish at Thanksgiving? I am a really big fan of the cranberry sauce, and I like the cornbread. I like cranberry sauce on cornbread. Really? Yeah. I've never tried that. I'm going to have to try it. I'm going to have to come on down to the Charlie Barron's Thanksgiving. You you hosting this year? No, for sure. No. Yeah, I don't host. I go over to my mom and my dad's and um, I usually say I'm going to bring something and then I do not bring it. Just say, ah, they were all out. Yeah, I just I bring over a bottle of booze. There you go. Or you know what my signature move is Hmm. is i say i'm gonna bring the wine because all year round if i get wine i don't drink wine so that's when i re-gift my wine every year thanksgiving and christmas i keep it in a special place are you getting a lot of gifts that are wine i I do get a fair amount of wine it's a very nice gift like what for what occasion are you getting because i don't get any wine ever as gifts well miles i see that doesn't surprise me (laughs) why you know it just doesn't surprise me. 
Okay. Yeah. What, but why? You just don't seem like a guy that would get wine. You know, you have to be a certain caliber of... Uh, but, like, are you inviting people over to your place and yeah. a bottle of wine? Yeah. I, you know what? I don't say I don't even know. It just shows up. Okay. Yeah. All right. My, th- my favorite dish, thanks for asking, Charlie, is the gravy. Did I not ask him, Jared? Oh, I gravy. must not have cared. The gravy? I'll put it on anything. I'll put it on cornbread. I'll put it on the cranberry. I'll put it on the turkey. I'll put it on the mashed potatoes. I'll put it on the corn. I'll put it on the lefts. I'll put it on it all. Wait, do you put it on the fries? Fries? Yeah. I don't. We don't have fries. Well, you just said you put it on anything. Oh, so. oh I thought we were talking Thanksgiving. Well, does anything. I don't drink gravy the rest of the year. I mean, eat gravy. (laughs) (laughs) Do you you like poutine? Yeah, it's fine. But I I like I I, Thanksgiving is when I just go all out. So you're not a gravy guy any other. I mean, I will. I just don't ever do it. Yeah. It's not often around gravy. Yeah. Um, You got to be and it's got to be made right, too. You know what? What are the ingredients of gravy? Do you know? I think it's a lot of the juices from the turkey. There's um, there's like these cube things. I don't. Yeah, I don't know what they're called. It's a whole concoction. My dad makes it. So no is the answer. No, I don't know how okay. to make it. Right. Um, Sounds but good. anyways, Charlie, yeah. happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving happy to thanks. all of the listeners out there. Yes, we are very thankful for all of you listening to the Bellied Up podcast. You are the reason we are sitting in this bar drinking on this particular day today. So thanks, guys. And uh, should we do some callers, Charlie? Sure. Sure. Hello. Welcome to the Bellied Up Podcast. Who is on the line with us today? Hello. This is Hayden. Hey, Hayden. Where are you calling in from, guy? Well, fella, I'm calling in from Logan, Utah, on the campus of Utah State University. Ah, Utah State. Okay. Well, what are you calling in for? What's on your mind? Well, you see, I, um, I'm working at a place I've been for, for about a year and solely would just like to see what you guys think about how I could get a raise. Ooh, you want to get a raise. You've been working there a year, you say? I've been working there almost exactly a year. Okay, it's about that time, okay. Miles. Yeah, you're a little... And it is about that time, isn't it? I suppose. Well, what do you do? And do you actually deserve a raise? That's uh, Those are the two questions off the top. First of all, hell yeah, I deserve this raise. <laughs> Why? Secondly, Why? <laughs> what have you been doing? Here we go. Here we go. Settle down, Miles. I'm going to tell you here. Um you know what, what you do might, is, are you are you going to take that same attitude with your boss too when he says that? Heaven, heaven, no. <laughs> I would love it if you did though. <laughs> Settle down, Jack. I tell I'll, just, you. I'll just set up. I'll just set up a, a hidden camera and send it to you guys and hear his <laughs> reaction there. <laughs> Anyways, what what I do for work is it's um, I work at an anodizing lab, and many people don't know what that is. I don't. Nope. I don't suppose that you guys would. That's not any knock on you guys, but nobody has known what I do in the past year. So basically what it is, is we get aluminum kind of parts and we we run them through various different chemical baths and they can come out different colors like black. The part can be clear, uh, even like red or blues, just not that common. But, and what this does to the part is it strengthens it and kind of weatherproofs it. So these parts go into all sorts of different things like uh, gun parts, racing parts, um, stuff for weather, uh, commercial material, uh, really anything you want. And it's called anodized, whatever you want anodized can be run through this. So what I do over the last few months is I'm a senior here at Utah state. So I'm studying human biology and I check all the different chemical baths, make sure they're all in line. So if nobody checks the chemical bath, then they're, the chemicals are out of whack and the products don't come out as good. And then you have to redo them in a nutshell. Does, does that make any sense? So yeah. the whole business hinges upon your uh, skill set, your unique set of skills. Is kind of what you're telling us here. Um, I don't think it would, I don't think per se it would, it would hinge on me, but because everyone else can do it, but no one else likes to do it. 
that's kind of where I have the uh, well, that's not a good start. My bar- <laughs> that's not a good start. What do you mean? You sound very. What do you, mean? you sound very replaceable to me. And last thing I need uh, okay. is someone who's replaceable asking for a raise. You know what I mean? So let, we gotta. We'll work on this. Uh, this is a good starting point. We gotta I make. Go okay. Okay, yeah. hear me, hear me out then. So, so then, what I do? Yeah, no, no one likes to do the anodized, the the chemical bath. I'm also outside, and there's a siren right now. You guys can hear that. Is the building on fire? Yeah. Did you go out the exit? What the hell are you doing? Emergency exit? I'm, I'm sitting here outside. I just hiked up the campus, and I'm out of breath. So he's, down, he's talking so. to us. He uh, spilled like- chemical everywhere, and now the alarm's <laughs> going off. One of the employees I, is washing just, his eyes out. Chemical <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so when my boss told me a while ago that I could start doing the chemical analysis, he says, do you like doing this? And I said, well, I, I do like doing it. That's kind of what I've been working at in school. Also, he doesn't like to do it. So I think it's a perfect win-win because he's busy doing other stuff. So this is one of my main, the main points of my job is to do this. Okay. Well, let's role play it. Yeah. Charlie, you be the boss. Okay. I want you to ask for a raise. Ready and go. Okay. His name's Keith, by the way. I'm Keith. Uh, hey, Keith, you think I can talk yeah. to you? Yeah, you're Keith. Charlie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Yeah, um, hey, Keith. So, yeah, tell him to get him. Tell him to get I'm sorry. Office? I'm sorry. Just one second. I'm busy, okay? Can you tell them to bring my coffee in and make it hot this time? Yeah, I I think they're bringing your coffee, but there was we had some issues with the chemicals, and so they're dealing with that right now. What do you mean we had issues? I just I got know. that. I, I just know. got I'm that. Just, kid I'm just a messenger. I'm just a messenger. Ah. I'll let you get back to what you're doing. Ah, now. I'll, what? I'll find your coffee. Okay. What? What is your name again? <laughs> Hello? Well, there's only three of us that work there. I don't. I am the boss. Don't think I don't know how many people I'm paying right now. Okay. What's your name? I forgot. All right. All right, boss man. My name's Hayden. Hayden. Uh, Hayden, you're the one who just screwed yeah. up the chemicals. There's chemical everywhere. I don't. In here. Hayden, did you I hear that? I screw up the chemicals, did, Keith. Did you spill the Keith, chemicals? No, I didn't screw up the chemicals. Were you the reason that alarm Absolutely went off not. earlier today? <laughs> Absolutely not. I was in the building across from me. What the hell were you doing over there, Hayden? Jeez, I don't know where this uh, this role play is going, but I, I just role can't play. ask you a simple question. I role play. Get blamed H- here. Hayden, I, I do yeah. not role play. Are you, do I need to get HR in here right now? I do not role play. What <laughs> me and my wife do behind closed doors... It's none of your business, Hayden. Oh, oh no, Steve's. This is escalated. This is escalated. Did you hear that? Steve's got chemical burns in his eyes, Hayden. Why aren't you down there? We don't test- have a Steve here. We don't well, have we Steve did until he fell into the chemical vat, Hayden. Don't tell That's me true. who he, works he here, Hayden. Guy. Hey, boss. I, don't true. worry. I, I got I, the chemical situation under control. You got it under control? Yeah, what are you and Hayden talking about? Well, we were just talking. I, I got to let him go. Do you want his job? Yes. Well, Hayden, that didn't go so good, did it, pal? Yeah, that went poorly. Yeah. What do you? Th- where do you think you went wrong? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, think, I don't think it was a realistic scenario. Okay. All, right. Yeah. All right. Sorry. We'll do, a, we'll do, a we'll real do it again. We'll do Straight real faces this time. Mild. Okay. So I guess to, to set the to set the scene a little better, there's yeah. only three people that work there. There's myself, there's my boss, Keith. Okay. Um, there's the son's owner, Tyson. And then we just hired a new guy for sandblasting. His name's Nathan. Gotcha. Okay. So no, nobody's getting so canned be- I, because we don't have the, the, the capacity to can. Okay. We'll, so we'll I take think, that out I the think the play. first lesson here though, is you got to make sure your boss is in a good mood, right? Yeah. That's that what yeah. we just learned. Of course. You got to read the room and pick your timing. All right. So. Do you uh, want to play boss this time? Or nope, you, want, you, you, you got it. Again. Okay. okay, okay. All right, boss. Here's your coffee. Also, oh, we just won uh, 500 bucks on scratch off. So we'll throw some your way. Did we really? Well, yeah. that's really nice. Yeah. Of you. You I'm going to get back to work. You can talk to Hayden now. Oh, okay. Oh, hey, Hayden. How are you, fella? Oh, oh yeah, Keith. Good. Yeah, I'm, I'm great. How are you doing today, Keith? You know, I'm, I'm blessed, Hayden. I am. Boy, this coffee Man, is delicious. I, I heard you just won 500 bucks in, in scratch offs. 
Yeah, yeah, we did. Well, I only won 10%, but those fellows won 500. Ah, I have the best That's employees. Hey, what a great day. Yeah. What a great day. Yes, we do. We just, we're just working hard every day over here, you know? Sure. What's, Hayden, have a seat. Sure. Have a seat. What's on your mind? Sure. Well, Keith, I'm just going to be honest with you. I've been here for one full year and I, I think I do a lot more. Have you been here things for around a year? the lab? I have. Have you been here for a year yes, already? Yes, Hayden? I have. Okay. Yeah, you guys employed me last October. Ah, just over so a year. I think with. Are you raising over your voice here? I, a I have bit? some more. What's that? Sorry, I just thought you were getting a little frustrated there. Was I cutting you off? Oh, yeah, I mean, just no. It's it's okay. It's okay. Are you sure it's okay? But Hayden? what I was saying is, we. Who cut yes, you I, off in your life before I, me, Hayden? Wait, can I can I get through this? this point real quick. Okay. Yes. Keith. Yes. Hayden, of course. Okay. So, so I've been here a year. Um, and I, I feel like I'm very comfortable in the job and I have along with the, the skill set that we, that we talked about when I got hired, I also have the, the skill set of analyzing the chemical baths and making sure all those are in line so that when we run the parts through these different baths, then they come out looking good and we don't have any any problems. So I guess what I'm asking is with all these responsibilities, I think, and with the time I've been here, I think it would be in our best interest to, that, that I can get a little bit of a raise, maybe um, oh, two to three dollars. Hey, oh. Hayden, I'm going to be honest with you. You were doing pretty good there until you went to the, I in know our look, best interest. Days oh, always sounds what like you look, were demanding a raise. Yeah, there. you're you're like oh. mansplaining the uh, raise process to uh, probably you know what is this a uh, <sighs> old old white guy? <laughs> I'm you know, uh, he's like he's he's probably not even forty. He's no, he's, well, he's a young guy. Okay. Well, first of all, do not. But no, when 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 I was going through that, I did feel like I was doing pretty good, and then I hit that line, and I was like, "Oh, they're gonna play me." So I so think okay. I it think, was a workshop. We'll workshop it. I think lesson number two is get to the point. The longer that you filibustered around and dancing around it. The more words you say, the dumber that it sounds. Yeah. And then you find yourself in a situation where you're now holding the boss hostage and demanding a raise. Yeah. So I think you just got to walk true. right in and say, I don't, I don't want to. Okay. Yeah. That's, he that's knows. Good. He I don't knows. really want to beat around the bush too much. Yeah. He knows what you're saying as soon as you pretty much walk in the door and start yammering. He knows where this is going. So I, and I, okay, fair I, enough. And I don't mean yammering in a disrespectful way, but you know, when you kind of like kind of building it up a little, you're like, Hey, um, he he knows all the work you've been doing. Yeah. You're like, Hey, I've been here for a year. I was curious if there is an opportunity for a raise, uh, coming up or if I should just go F myself. And then you always got to have the get out of jail (laughs) free card in your back pocket. And here's what it is. What is it? He's like, Hey, you know, actually, If you ask for the raise, he's like, you know, it's been a little tight lately, Um, this and that. And I just I don't know if it's in the budget right now. Then you say, that's fine, Keith. I understand. Um, I guess I'm just going to have to take my talents to the other company um, then. And I guess you're going to have to work later on Thursdays instead of go to your poker night. Damn, that's true. Damn, That, that can always work. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Make it short and sweet and uh, and really to the point there. But then you do need to be prepared to actually elaborate. quit your job. <laughs> yeah. So maybe that's not the best route. <laughs> Hayden, um, can I ask how much uh, you make an hour? Yeah, so when I when I started, I originally pitched 18 an hour. And they said, uh, we can do 16. And I said, uh, okay, that's, that's reasonable. Like starting on, and I didn't have all the... Um, I wasn't doing everything now that I was then. So I thought 16 was fine. So but the other guy who got hired, mm-hmm. sorry. So I'm still making 16, first of all. Okay. And then the other guy that I talked about, I know at one point he was making 18, but I saw one of his pay subs and he's making 20 now. So that's why I feel <laughs> like if he gets one, I can also get one. Hayden, 
paid him. We're going to back up this what? little story truck here, pal, and ask, how did you see his pay stuff? <laughs> yeah, what are you doing? Yeah, because... Well, it's, it's, it's printed out, so sometimes he'll leave it on the counter. Oh, like but... But it's just sitting there. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not snooping on files like on the uh, computer. What do they call that? Uh, where you just discover evidence without <laughs> even trying or something? Remember what that's called? Yeah, that's exactly what it was. Okay. Because my pay stub looks the exact same as his, obviously without my name and but you know, the same, how long same looking is, type how of paper. How long has this person been working there though? That's getting paid twenty an hour. He has been working there only a few months longer than I have because the business started last August, last September. Okay. So he's been there since day one, but well, relatively about the same time as myself. I mean, you're getting screwed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hayden, you are, but you know what? Um, I think that, yeah, the squeaky, um, squeaky wheels getting the extra $4 an hour here. And so what are you going to ask for? How much are you going to ask for when he says, well, how much do you want? Well, I'm like 18, maybe 19. I don't feel like, because I'm part-time, because I'm a student, so I don't feel like I deserve a full 20 like the other guy does, because he does full-time. I think that's realistic. So about 18, 19. Uh, I mean, I think that sounds fine. Yeah, I honestly, I think you go twenty one. Let him walk you back down to twenty. Yeah, you, know? you can only you you can always come down. <laughs> okay, so maybe start at like twenty eight, and then just you know that's then, true. Then he's gonna counter with just, seventeen. Just an outright gonna, ten dollar increase. And then yeah. you're gonna counter with twenty seven, and he's gonna counter with eighteen, and then you're gonna counter with twenty six, and then you'll just fold that nineteen. Then he'll feel like he got that's a deal true. out that's of a it. Great point. Yeah, you want him leaving feeling like he's getting a coupon of a worker here. Uh, what kind of a guy is your like didn't I? Yeah, what kind? What kind of guy is your boss though? I think that also like is he like uh, um, is he a people pleaser? Is he a hard ass? Is he does he like talk to you? Um, does he kind of ignore you? What kind of a guy is he? No, so the the lab that we're in it's like a, a small warehouse so we're not in like close proximity all day but whenever i see him first in the morning i worked this morning seven to like nine thirty he'll always say hi to me beginning of the morning um i wouldn't say he's a people pleaser but he is very easy to get along with the only times i've seen him not upset or angry but the times i've seen him um correct me i guess in a stern way is yeah when the first few months I was working there I was uh just making some first learning mistakes well, I but think, no he's a real easygoing fella yeah I think you're maybe overthinking it I think you just walk in there get straight to the point uh make sure he's in a good mood and then just make your ask and uh let Jesus take the wheel after that what do you think Charlie I think that that sounds pretty good but go over what you want because he's gonna walk you down whatever you say especially since you have a history of that if, you said 18, he walked you down to 16. If he accepts your offer right away yeah. and you didn't ask for for enough, you want him to say, well, I can't do that, but I can do blank. Yeah, so go over what that other okay. fellow is asking. Okay, that's good. That's good to know. Yeah, because like you said, I am, I'm, not, I'm not the backbone of, of the facility, but yeah, I am really the only one that checks these chemicals two times a week. It takes me about two hours to do it, too. So it's a lengthy process. Two hours a week? Wow, two a hours week? a week, that is. Well, four hours a week. No, four hours a week. Two times oh, two God. times per day. I, I checked them Monday and on Thursday. Hayden, we got don't a, bring that into your argument. Yeah, okay? we got Tim Ferriss on our hands, a four-hour work week. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> well, All right, man. Well, we appreciate you calling in. Fella. Good luck on your ask. Let us know if you got the raise or not. You guys are the best. I want you to know that. Godspeed and uh, watch out for deer. All right, okay. Hayden. We'll see you now. He's not going to keep it short and sweet, Charlie. No, uh, he's he a is. Talker. He is going to dance around it. He's going to go in with the nerves. And you could tell when I was role playing with him, he was getting frustrated. He was getting frustrated. <laughs> he was, he's he, like, he, hey, he's like, can I just finish? I was like, dude, you will not talk to your bosses. You got to be in. Yeah, Play I, I don't want to say it, but I think you got him rattled. I did. I got into his noggin. But now when he goes in, it'll be easy because, you know, 
we made it hard on them in practice. I hope so, because you, you practice how you play, you know? That's right. And I really do, Miles, I want to say, I just really appreciate the way you built the world for us by yeah. with the chemical spill yeah. in the background and everything. That was really helpful. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. Well, should we take another caller? Let's do it. Welcome to the Belly It Up podcast. Who are we talking to? Hey, guys, you're talking to Elijah. What's going on, guys? Elijah? Yes, sir. Elijah, where are you calling in from, my guy? I'm calling in from the great Granville, New York. Now, before I hear some booze, I am a Midwesterner at heart. I was born and raised in southwest Missouri. Okay, Southwest Missouri. The borderline, you, though. That, that's it. Miles, it's the rec room yeah. of the Midwest. <laughs> that it's, is true. It's the rec room down yeah. there in the basement, okay? It's just as important yeah. as the living room. Well, you know what? I got to say, we did take the champion, um, like, meth capital of the world there in Springfield. So we got some stuff going there for <laughs> us. That was years ago, though, so. About the butthole now. <laughs> well, well, congratulations. Why don't you belly up to the bar, Elijah, and tell us. It's Elijah, right? I, I, I got that right, huh? It is. All it right. is. Elijah, belly on up to the bar. Tell us what's on your mind, fella. Take a load off. So Christmas is coming up, and I've gotten two calls so far, one from my mom, one from my grandpa. Now, my grandmother passed away two years ago, um, and my grandpa, you know, he was there by her bedside, obviously. He loved the lady. So mm -hmm. he decides after her death to go into one of those assisted livings. Well, he met a girl there, a nice old lady. Her name's uh, Helen. And uh, so they decided, like, the whole um, assisted living really liked those two to click. They're the greatest buddies, right? So they talked them both into, they tricked them. One of them told my grandpa, oh, Helen's moving out. She's thinking of getting her own place. And the other told Helen, oh, Norval's moving out. He's thinking of getting his own place. So they both talked to each other and got like a place together, like a little uh, duplex. Whoa, they're moving in together, huh? Invite us all over for Christmas. And she still thinks Helen and grandpa are coming out. But my wait, grandfather wait, wait. calls on. me and he said, Elijah, you got to back it up a bit. You cut out there. So after the, so they're dating is what you're saying. They, uh, you know what? They, they're friends. They're pretty much dating. Yeah. Do you think that they're bumping uglies or no? <laughs> you know what? I'm going to tell you no, because my grandpa can't even get down the stairs. But I mean, for the sake of just torturing my mother to death, I've always said, I think, I think they're bumping. I think they're <laughs> yeah. bumping. All right. So scenario is great. Grandma dies. Sorry about that, by the way. Grandpa assisted living meets Thank a you. nice old lady. Then now he's moved in with her. Yeah. They've invited you over mm -hmm. for Christmas and your mom's not happy with it. So she's so she doesn't know they're coming. My grandpa called me and he said, "Look, we want to do Big Cedar Lodge in Branson, but he said your mother really doesn't like Hal." And he's like, "I don't know." He's so oblivious. He's like, "I don't know why she's so nasty to her." And I'm like, "Ah, uh, you know, you kind of got a girlfriend after Grandma passed away. Well, Is that not it's the like a the vow is to death. Yeah. Do we part? So That's in right. death, I mean, he's following the rules, you know? Now, if this was four years That's ago, right. I could see why your mom would take issue with it. But, you know, your, your right. grandpa is his own man. And why doesn't she like Helen? Is it just the fact that he's she is dating your grandpa? Or is, has she said some stuff to your mom that, that she's upset about? So it's really just the, um, what kick started it off. It's mostly just, you know, my, my mom hasn't had too much of a close relationship with my grandpa. Does so she kind of want, you know how like someone's passing away. So you try to get as much closure or talks. It's almost like a lot of his time. It's never like my mom and my grandpa. It's always my mom, grandpa and Helen. And she doesn't want, 
Helen around. Now, what kick-started it off, one day Helen got a nice little ring on her left hand, if you know what I mean. All oh. right? So Don't my tell me grandpa said, yeah, my grandpa said, oh, it's from an admirer, whatever. Get this. My mom pretty much drug my grandpa to the bank to get bank statements because she's also on his bank account. She, he, he signed it over to her to make, you know, because when he passes, it'll go to her. So she went ballistic and drug him to the bank to see if he actually bought her that ring or not. They're not really married. It was just a cute thing, but that's crazy, right? So wait, he, he bought her the ring and your mom lost her shit. Mm-hmm. Pretty much because it was just, it was like, I think that was kind of the final straw where my mom was like, that's it. You can have a friend, but now we're buying rings and everything. She's not ready for a new mom. I think is yeah, <laughs> she's, going on. she's hurt. She's feeling her feelings. You know, I mean, I don't know that she's right, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, I, I, mean, I don't know that your grandpa's wrong either. So you know? this is a mess. Yeah. So how do you think Christmas is going to go? <laughs> this is a movie is what this is. <laughs> how is Christmas going to go? <laughs> so they're just going to show up and your mom's not going to know that Helen's coming? So, yeah, pretty much. Well, no, my grandpa, my mom still thinks Helen and grandpa are coming for the whole week. We're staying at Big Cedar for a whole week. Now, she doesn't, um, she doesn't know that she don't know that at all. She still thinks grandpa and Helen are coming out for a week, but grandpa said they're only showing up for a day and then they're leaving because, <laughs> Oh, like, damn. Hanging out. Yeah. Well, they got to go see Helen's family. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. <laughs> the plot thickens. That's what I said. I said Helen ought to bring her own family down for vacation because it's these little timeshares. I said we should all just bunk rooms together, get like the same little uh, rooms back to back and just watch the fire build. I mean, just watch it go up in play. So, I mean, I always had my uh, suspicions about like assisted living places and uh, like nursing homes and stuff. Yeah. I was, I, I mm -hmm. view it as it's just an old people dorm room and everyone is just fornicating like the, bunnies. They're there. rocking and rolling. Yeah. You it's know, like, it's, it's, it's a blue right. chew haven. You it's kind of nice assisted living. You don't even have to clean up after there's someone there to do that. Yeah. You know? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Hey, I mean, if that's what he wants to do, I say go for it. That guy deserves it. A good man. I say go for it, bud. You know what? It, you know, well, um, how long after your grandma died did he like, do you suspect he started dating Helen? I would like to say about. Uh, Ooh, see, that's a good question. Cause I'm, I'm still kind of in the dark on that. No one's really said dates. They just mentioned that once he got into assisted living, they started talking. Obviously I want to tell you about six to nine months is probably about <laughs> really? when their friendship really? quote, six end quote, to started. You chose six to nine months, not six to eight, not seven to 10, six to nine. Did you really well, just do that? <laughs> That was your estimation yes, right there? Yes, because that's, that's right. Huh. That's right. Do you think they're doing that? <laughs> it's a coincidence. <laughs> I don't want to think about it. That's the thing. Well, now you just but got that little are, mental cartoon up in the dome. Sorry about it, but is, you brought uh, it up. I was my mind was not in the gutter yeah. until you said that. So, how long were your grandma and grandpa married before she passed away? Um. Well, see, that's that's also a good question. I know it feels like I don't know a lot about the <laughs> subject, but um, you got to remember, I'm 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 states away from from my grandparents. So, uh, grandpa, give and me my a mom. rough estimate. So it's like all this. <laughs> Like 30 years, Jeez. 40 years, 50 years, yeah, how 10 old, years. How old's your mom? Were they I, married the whole time your mom if was? I rem yeah. 
Well, because it, it was like, um, gosh. You're hiding something. I think what they got it? married back somewhere in like the 50s. I want to say they were married for a good 50 or 60 years, okay. my grandpa, my okay. grandma. So basically, I mean, that, that adds up. It's yeah. like uh, when you let yeah. someone go at your company every year they're there, you get two weeks severance. <laughs> Every year, every 10 years yeah. that you're married to someone, you get one month of mourning and then you can get back out there and you're back in there. And who's to say how long it should take to mourn a, a 50 year deal? You know, who's to say? If anything, he's probably uh, your grandma passing away. It reminded him of our finite time here on Earth. And he said, I got to get back busy because I don't have much time to uh, be fornicating anymore. Hey, I got a question. Was he um, yeah. was he living in a house with your? He was living in a house with your grandma when she passed, correct? What What was the question? You guys are cutting now. It might be on my end. All right, sorry. Was your grandpa living with your grandma in the house when your grandma passed? My grandfather and my grandma in the house. That's what I got. That's what I got from your end. Oh, <laughs> question. Let me ask. I'm one. out in the middle. I'm out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, my, then my it would be on. Then it would be on your end. Yeah. yeah. Did your mom put your? Did your mom encourage your grandpa to move into the retirement home? Oh, um, yeah. Grandpa moved into the retirement home. Grandpa, grandma, and grandpa always lived together. And then after my mom moved out, like out of, uh, when she got out of high school, my grandma and grandpa, all they did was get separate bedrooms. And then it was, they were never in like an old folks home or retirement home. Grandpa went into the retirement home about six months after grandma passed away. And then Helen, I think she had already been there for a little while. Um, but in that retirement home, did your mom pressure your grandpa to go to that retirement home? She did. Who, she <laughs> did. has no idea. She did about actually. Any. Now she that did. I think, it, now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure my my mom did. So she might be the cause of all this. She huh? is absolutely the cause of it, and all the anger she is putting towards your grandpa is not even intended for him, or it's not intended for Helen. She is using Helen as, as the, she is basically mad at herself, and Helen is her scapegoat. There it is. Wait, I I want you to backpedal yeah. for a sec, though. Did you say your grandma and grandpa did not sleep in the same room? I mean, that's common because it's like, it's like you always, you always got to look at both sides, but it's like now that, now that I'm kind of coming on the realization that like, yeah, my mom kind of did pressure my grandpa into the, I mean, I think they always thought, I think he even always thought about it, but the fact that she also pushed him into it just to kind of give him some more like social, like he's a talker just to give him some more social, uh, you know, able to talk to other people. That is a good question because, but I don't think my mom wants to feel that guilt. You know what? You know what I mean? I she think, doesn't, she doesn't want to feel part of the problem. But I think, I think it's the truth. And I think the time for her to realize the truth is that one day when your grandpa and Helen are there on Thanksgiving, I think that's it. Yeah. Cause it's man. Yeah. And I mean, I've already, I've already talked to her about half of this anyways. Um, I mean, cause like what, like what you're saying, I mean, I've, I've tried talking to my mom, but she just, uh, she's, she just needs to get with my grandpa and talk about all this. I don't think they've even talked because that's crazy that she doesn't even know that he's coming out. Like, <laughs> Okay, here's the plan. Yeah. On Christmas, you and Helen are going to go for a walk, you know, kind of like the high schoolers mm -hmm. do on Thanksgiving where they go smoke weed, <laughs> saying they're going for a walk. <laughs> you and Helen go maybe uh, go for a walk, and then you leave them to, and you you don't come back until they've hashed it all out and are happy. Yeah. You get a flat yeah. tire somewhere. Yeah. 
I mean, should I do it? Should I also do it on the day? Should I do like it like a day before too? like just go and talk with my mom prior to, I mean, and you know what? I got a question for you guys. Should I also call her and like, cause I was on the phone with her the other day, but I didn't say anything about grandpa not coming because he asked me not to tell my mom Don't. about all that. Yeah. So it's like, should I call her and give her like a heads up? Cause we're about to book like a couple of rooms. Well, you know, depends. Do you want to be a narc on your grandpa or you want to stay cool with your grandpa? And then all of a sudden you got a mad mob, mad grandma. And next thing you know, it's just you and Helen sitting on the couch wondering what, how the hell you ended up in this place. Yeah. The real question is, are you a rat? Yeah. Mom. I mean, geez. Yeah. It's just all this. This is just about every large Midwest family. I feel like too. It's just all. No, you know, anytime the holidays are around, oh. it's never the it's never a cheerful holiday. It's all fun and games, you know. It's just drama, drama, drama. Tricky um, dynamics, tricky dynamics. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but I do yeah. like that plan, Miles, that you had. I actually had the same idea right as you were about to say it, but I let you say it. And um, I do think that that'll be good. It it can be a real touching, healing moment. I think. Let's just hope you don't come back. And, um, you know, a felony has been committed by your mother, you know, (laughs) and he lost service or you there, pal. No. Did he drop? Hello. He dropped. All right. Well, that's a that's <laughs> folks, when you're uh dealing with the Midwest call in show, you know, lack of service is just part of the game we play here. But I tell you what though, Charlie, did yeah. you see him so he said that his grandparents yeah. were they didn't sleep in the same room and he grazed over that. And then when I asked him again, uh-huh. he avoided it again. <clears throat> he so did. what I was kinda going is like, you know what, maybe uh Maybe it's been a while. Maybe it's been a while. Maybe it's and been a while. And when you go into a dorm room, <laughs> I mean, and there's estrogen and testosterone everywhere. It's time. What to, is a guy supposed to do? It's in our nature. I know. know. I know. And you know, he is a single fella. And six months is pretty short, too. By the way, yeah. <laughs> Sixty years together, <laughs> and then six months later. Well, so I think you know. I think we can just leave it at there. Might have been some, you know. I'm not. No, look, there's no judgment. Nope. I and look, it, it the separate bedrooms thing could just be he was sawing logs, or she was. Now, every night. if I put myself in the mom's shoes, mm-hmm. it would be tough right away initially mm-hmm. to see your dad with another woman. Yes, and, but and I also think the idea of her never really getting that father daughter time. I think that's the deeper it's issue. It's more here. so. She's, I mean, this has probably been an issue since she was little, right? Just mm-hmm. not enough attention from dad. Yep. And now it's just all boiled over. Yeah. And I love that it's coming to a head on the holidays. This dude. is a great movie. It this is, is. This is like a Sandra Bullock movie. I yeah. Like. Yeah, it is. It, it, the question is, is it a rom-com? I think it's a dramedy. I, I would go more rom-com. Okay. You would go dramedy, huh? Yeah, because then the the peak point is the grandpa's like, I just love her. And then, yeah. What if, Miles, what if we wrote that movie? What if we did it? We could. We could. That could be great. I feel like that'd be a fun, you know, Robert De Niro or someone like that. Yeah, Yeah, Hallmark. (laughs) Maybe we make a Hallmark uh, movie. That would be cool. Hey, if you guys want to be in this movie, send us your headshots. Yeah, we're going to need some extras, too. Yeah, we are. If we, you, we need some. If you got grandparents, volunteer. And we're gonna need some people for the nursing home as well. Yeah. <laughs> you just get one senile guy walking around without any pants on. That'd be great. Where's all the black licorice at? <laughs> Grandpa's love black licorice. I know. Yeah. Well, Charlie. Uh, Miles. Also, thanks for calling in. By the way. Yeah. Kind of abrupt ending, but yeah. uh, good luck. With your uh, Christmas nightmare on Christmas. Yeah, that's going to suck. Also, his mom is buying an extra hotel room for a week. Yeah. Oh, my Lord. My Lanta. Well, it's going to be a doozy. But in the movie, I wonder if 
they stay the rest of the week, you know? Anyway, we'll, we'll think work, about yeah, it. I was just trying to think of a spin on that, but yeah. Yeah, we'll All workshop. Right. We'll take another caller. What workshop. if the grandpa meets someone else on the vacation? This could be fun, folks. This could be fun. This could be fun. And then no, when he meets... Helen comes on to the son. To yeah. The, to the grandson. <laughs> Yeah, Helen's kind of a perv. Helen's know? a total guilt. Yeah. Yeah. This is going to be great. And then he now, he's got his mom mad, his grandpa is annoyed, and now he has to tell his grandpa that Helen tried to hook up with him, and it's just the worst Christmas ever. What if the mom walks in on them, and the mom has conflicted And like feelings. Helen's got her hand on his leg, and just <laughs> she just has to assume, and now she thinks that Helen's just sleeping with everybody. <laughs> This is going to be a great movie, guys. This is going to be a great movie. Based on true events. It's ba- not a true story. No. Based on, loosely based on true events. Right. We're going to keep the names, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Charles, take another caller. Yeah, let's do it. Hip. Miles, Thanksgiving is tomorrow. And you know what I'm going to be doing? I'm going to be sitting on my couch, pouring myself a nice cold glass of tippy cow. And I'm going to be raising my glass high and I'm going to give you a call and I'm going to FaceTime you <laughs> and I'm going to be like, Miles, this glass of tippy cow is for you. Well, I appreciate that. I'm very thankful for that. Um, there's no better way on Thanksgiving after you're plump full to fill in the cracks for mm. dessert. That's true. Little pumpkin pie, little tippy cow. Yeah. That's, you don't even need whipped cream. You just get the vanilla tippy oh, cow yeah. and tip it on back, fill in the cracks. Mm. I like that analogy, filling in the cracks. It's almost like the stuff you spray inside the tire to patch it. Yeah. Tippy cow, baby. Tip it on back. Welcome to the Bellied Up Podcast. Who is on the horn? Hey, this is Cameron. Hey, Cameron. Where are you calling in from? Uh, calling in from Iowa up in Dubuque today. Dubuque. It's a beautiful town. Well, sure is. belly on the up to the bar, Cameron in Dubuque. Tell us what's on your mind, fella. Well, um, I've had this. I, I recently just bought a house, um, and access to the driveway is through an alleyway. And the thing about the alleyway is it's a complete mess. The neighbors' trees are all stretching out. So you drive any vehicle through there, and you're going to get scratched up paint. And then there are potholes. Like we have a, like me and my wife have a Mustang. You can't drive the Mustang through there because you're going to bottom out the Mustang. So it's like, I don't know if I should resolve this with my neighbors or I should go to the city. You know, it's kind of a difficult situation. Oh, Oh, first thing, did you or did you not buy the house? I did. Yeah, yeah. And did you not take a look at the alleyway before you bought it? Because it sounds like this was all stuff that's been there a while. Look at Miles, always victim blaming. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, you see, at the time, you know, the market wasn't uh, that nice to us, I guess. So we're like, well, it's it's a little sucky that the driveway and access to the garage is through an alleyway. But compared to everything else we got, we're like, yeah, this is good enough. This will this will do. The juice was worth the squeeze, and you had the Mustang when you made that decision, right? We did, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So, would talk to me about your neighbors. I mean, first off, I think you do got to talk to neighbors before you go to the city, because then you're just the tattletale guy to the city after that. So I think first you got to go to the yeah. neighbors. What are they like? What, what How are they going to take it? I think for the most part, neighbors are pretty friendly. I haven't gotten around to meeting all of them. Um, my one neighbor, uh, Jerry, he's a real nice guy. He used to work sanitation in the uh, city. And he said, he's got like a poker voice like this. He's like, how you doing? You know, he's a really nice guy. <laughs> so time out. Is he, you're, you um, told me that he works for the mob. Yeah, you could say that. Works in sanitation. Okay, yeah. got it. So you got one mobster. What are the other ones? Yeah, so I think he could have my side. Um, 
otherwise, you know, I haven't, I haven't really met any of my other neighbors on like my side of the street. Um, but the main, the main issue, the, like the main house that has like the worst overgrown trees is like down the street on the other side of the alleyway. So I don't know their whole situation. Well, I, I mean, the easy solution here is just you go trim those trees for them. I mean, what kind of a neighbor are you? Ask not what your neighbors can do for you. Ask what you can do for your neighbors. Right. That's a good point. But it, it's also like, you know, are they going to call the cops? Like, there's some weirdo in the alleyway cutting my trees. So well, I was kind of thinking, well, maybe I could be like the Batman of the alleyway and go at night. And hear my mom. <laughs> yeah, which escalates <laughs> everything. Also, yeah. Right. yeah, let's he's, get this he's chainsaw already worried out about at being night. the crazy chainsaw guy. <laughs> now he wants to do it at night. <laughs> Why don't you put a hockey mask on while you're at it? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so then they, they won't see my face. So what, in a perfect world, what do you want to happen? In a perfect world, you know, I'd like the, the alleyway to be nice and smooth, nice and flat, so it's not like I'm going through a safari about to jump out of my seat. Who's who's going like to pay for that? the trees and the... Who's going to pay for that? Just well... Cause, just because you got a Mustang, everyone else got to pay for it? <laughs> Yeah, he spent all his well, money on the Mustang. I think the, the city, you know, if uh, I, I also have a truck, so if like the city could, do, I could make maybe, maybe a deal with the city and just grab like a bunch of gravel and just load it up in the back of the truck. I'll fill the holes myself, but like I, I don't know if I need to get a permit or something like that. What for town it. do you live in? Well, I, I live in Marion, uh, next to Cedar Rapids. Okay. Yeah. So, first of all, if you just want to put some gravel down, I think you just go ahead and do that. I don't think you need the city's permission. If you do, what are they going to do? Make you shovel the gravel out of there? Yeah, that's a good point. What are you looking up, Charlie? I'm looking okay. up the, the rules in Marion. City oh, of Marion. <laughs> I'm looking up the, the alleyway. Oh, this is a long document. I'll tell you that much <laughs> right now. Um, also, yeah, what, what, if you don't want to cut all the trees down or trim all the trees, just cut a square out of the trees that is as tall as your Mustang, and then you can just slide right underneath all the branches. Oh. It's not a bad idea right there. I, I like that. Yeah, kind of like efficient. Yeah, I say gravel's not okay. that expensive. Go get yourself uh, uh, half a bed truckload of gravel um you know you can afford it you got a mustang and um just start filling those potholes trim those trees and then call it a day you know i think that is the very simple solution to all of it and make sure you cut down those trees too and yes i do like your idea of doing it at night and uh definitely wear a mask and also set up some gopros and film it and send us the footage oh, okay yeah, I'll, I'll have to do that. Sounds like you think I'm not being serious about that advice right now. Well, you know, I, I'm just afraid that maybe someone would uh, think I'm up to something bad carrying like, a, you know, like a tree trimmer with a mask, maybe well, in dark clothing as well. All right. We'll do it during the day then. I think I think it's a simple enough solution. Okay. So you, how do you think it's going to go if you go to your neighbors? If you go to your neighbors and say, I want to redo the road. I want to trim all the trees. I want to put a new light, street light back there. I want to make you guys all get new fences. Like, what, how is this going to go? Yeah. Well, see, that's my fear. I don't want to be like the HOA of the alleyway, but. <laughs> You know, I, I it kind of sounds like you're trying to start an HOA. Yeah, that sounds oh. like a tagline. Sounds more than anything like else. you're one of those guys. You're gonna start collecting dues oh, from I, everyone. Uh, I, okay, I maybe I I wouldn't want it like my neighbors to pay for it, but you know, technically the alleyway is like city property, so you know maybe I. What do you guys think about if I went like 
house to house and got signatures. And then I could be like, hey, me and my neighbors, we want to improve the alleyway. What you guys do it for us? Yeah, I don't love it. It's going to take a while. It's solid. Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of a lot of work. And that, you know, I. Oh, the, okay. Here we I go. Don't, I don't got the time for that. There we go. You. The solution is not to make the alleyway better yourself. The solution is to make the alleyway worse for all involved because oh. they need a reason to jump into action much like you are. So I would say oh. you got to find out what they love. You got to find their Mustang per se uh-huh. and ruin it for mm-hmm. them. Yeah. You know, if they love their house, just maybe uh, cut a notch in one of the trees. And then when a the big wind comes, it'll blow over onto their house. They're like, see, we should have trimmed that tree down and it wouldn't have uh, been hanging over that and it wouldn't have fallen on our house. Full bellied up disclosure. That was the advice of Miles Montplaisier, not Charlie <laughs> Barron's. Please direct all lawsuits to OUBetcha.com. No, it's a it's an act of God. It was it was just an accident. Oh, yeah. Was that notch an act of God, Miles? Well, he tripped and his axe fell and hit into the tree. Oh, I suppose you're right. Yeah. I suppose you're right. So that's one option. You know, you could find out that, uh, you know, there's a neighbor kid who likes to rollerblade, throw some loose gravel down. And when he's coming around oh, the corner, there. get some road rash. That'll make there. that neighbor go into action. All of a sudden, everyone's there getting... There is a neighbor kid that- yeah, everyone's getting hurt. Everyone's in danger. And next thing you know, you got yourself. It's going to look like a brand new spanking road back there. Or you just start hanging out in the alleyway, like wearing a bunch of dark clothes, you know, so no, everyone, you know, they think you're a, a <laughs> sketchy figure, you know, just put, put your hood up, you know, and kind of walk around and say, hey, how you doing? You know, and just and what will that accomplish? I, it'll p- make them. It'll put some lights in the alleyway. Oh, so, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It just, and they go see. It's such a shitty alleyway that even drug dealers want to hang out here. Yeah, say hey, you know, I can get you some. Is weed legal in Iowa? No, only only uh, for uh, medical needs. Yeah, so you just say hey, I got some medicinals. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you I know, got a PhD. You know. You got a PhD? No, I don't. But like, I could tell my Selling. my customers. <laughs> oh, that was a funny joke. <laughs> that was a, you made a funny. That was really good. So, do you have a bead on one of your neighbors on something that you want to destroy and of theirs? You know, yeah, <laughs> your uh, kid wiping out kind of reminded me. Of, uh, there's this neighbor kid that has like a little. Uh, like a uh, scooter or like a Segway and he'll go like 30 miles an hour down the alleyway. So I, I don't want to your idea. I think maybe he'll make like a huge ramp and then maybe he'll like ramp into a tree. And then like his mom would be like, yeah. okay, we need to do something about this. We need to do something about the road and this tree that's hanging over. Once again, the views expressed on the belly Up podcast by miles. The you betcha guy are not that of Charlie Barron's. Um, um so and okay, so you need to sabotage the alleyway even further. More potholes, more uh, clotheslines, stuff like that. You know, nothing will make a parent go faster than when a kid gets clotheslined by a branch on a scooter. Then you need to have a neighborhood party at your house, and you need to start stirring the pot. Oh, you know, yeah. all this is happening. So is little Timmy okay on that scooter accent? God. That alleyway just is not safe for kids. You guys right? should really report that to the city. Get yeah. them to pay for it. And yep. you just start, you got to go oh, the indirect yeah. route. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you help themselves make the solution. You're not burdening them by making them pay for a new road. I think I like that direction. Well, it's gonna, although it's going to take uh, it's going to take 12 to 18 legal liabilities months. liabilities on that too. A lot of them. A lot of them. Yeah. Hey, who's your least favorite neighbor and why? Um I mean it it it'd probably be that one down the road that's got a tree hanging out. I used to be one right next to me. Not not Jerry but the other one cuz their lawn was like way overgrown. You know, I got the weeds crawling up my hill. Um, but they actually just had someone resolve all that. So, you know, they're, they're back up on top of my list, but, uh, it's gotta be that one that just like 
will not touch their lawn, you know? Well, and, you know, if you're worried about the legal problems, you are literally have a mobster in your neighborhood. That's true. He's going to take care of all that. So maybe oh. just get him on board beforehand. Yeah, I, I can ask him for legal advice. Yeah. Well, ask him for legal. Yeah, ask him how to get out of legal troubles. Yeah. It'll yeah. Involve, yeah. <laughs> it'll involve a baseball bat. Um. Well. Right. Yeah, I think we have solved some of your problems. Are you satisfied uh, today? Would you like to leave a review for your experience on the Belly Up podcast? Yeah, I, I think I I'm gonna give a you know a five out of five because. Uh, I got some options. Mm-hmm. I got, you know, like the long term, you know, uh, making a ramp in the alleyway. You know, that's not, that's an option. Um, but I, you know, I could also, uh, you know, just go out in the middle of the day and uh, take care of it as well. So, yeah, which might yeah, be the easier options. thing at the end of the day. But um, we're gonna leave it to you. We wish you and your alleyway all, all the right. best, and um, tell your neighbors we says hi. Watch out for branches. Yeah. Oh, will do. Yeah, yeah. All, All right. right. Thanks we'll, for the advice, guys. You betcha. We'll talk soon. I mean, he's got to go the indirect route. Yeah. Make it worse before it gets better. I mean, the clear answer here is just call the city and they'll do it. But yeah. what fun would that be? I don't know. Yeah. It's just if the word gets out that you're calling the city that first first thing a problem, it's not good in the neighborhood. You're gonna lose all your uh, credibility. Maybe they they maybe they'd be thankful. Yeah, maybe they've know. been thinking the same thing too. Maybe they're on the line ready to talk to us about that same alleyway. And how their neighbor always is rolling through that alleyway with his loud Mustang and yeah. waking everybody up. Yeah. <laughs> And his chainsaw, <laughs> cutting down trees. He's always building dangerous ramps for the kids. Yeah. <laughs> He's got to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, Charlie, I think that's another good episode of the Belly It Up podcast. What do you think? We got another one in the tank, Miles. Hey, I hope all of you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. I am thankful for each and every one of you. And Miles, I'm thankful for you, too. Thankful for you, too, Charlie. Guys, we're also thankful for our bartenders. So, as always, don't forget to tip your bartender. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.